Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, April 4th, 524 a.m. Central Time. May corn futures down four at 653 and three quarters. May soybeans down two and a half at 1519 and a half. May Chicago wheat up five and a half at 699. May Kansas City wheat up nine and three quarters at 885. May spring wheat up seven and a quarter at 899. We're going to start off with the U.S. radar here this morning. Snow falls over parts of South Dakota, a little bit of North Dakota, and into Minnesota this morning. This system will persist through tomorrow and will ultimately drop a foot to two feet of snow across a lot of South Dakota, a lot of North Dakota, and about half of of, uh, Minnesota, more like the northern half. Some of these areas are already sitting with a near record snowpack <clears throat> ahead of spring planting. Temperatures slighted to remain mostly below normal or below freezing rather through Monday. Highs should be in the 40s early next week like Monday. And then I think er- or the uh, middle to later part of next week is when you're going to see a more drastic warm up based on this morning's forecast. The GFS this morning says uh, the potential for highs in the 60s and 70s exists by uh, say Thursday, Friday next week. So you may finally see the big warm-up in these areas later half of next week there's still a lot of chatter out there regarding acreage possibilities we're expecting or rather farmers intend to plant a lot more corn in these areas this year Uh, i don't know if that's going to happen or not because of the weather if you guys farm in south dakota if you farm in north dakota if you're in some of these uh, northern parts or central parts of minnesota and you have issues uh, drop me a comment here in the youtube video Uh, let me know what you think in terms of acreage possibilities We had our first national uh, crop conditions and progress report out yesterday. The U.S. corn crop is 2% planted through Sunday. Uh, We only had planting in Texas, which was 54% complete. North Carolina, 3% complete. Kentucky, 1% complete. And Kansas, 2% complete. No progress reported elsewhere. That 2% print for U.S. corn planting very much in line with the five-year average. No soybean planting reported, uh, as would be normal this time of year. Winter wheat conditions are absolutely terrible. The U.S. winter wheat crop rated only 28% good to excellent as of Sunday. That's the worst initial rating in more than 20 years, I believe, since 1996. A whopping 36% of the U.S. winter wheat crop is rated poor to very poor. Ratings in your HRW areas of the Southern Plains are especially bad. Better ratings in SRW areas of the Midwest help to pull the national average higher. Uh, Kansas is only rated 16% good to excellent and 57% poor to very poor. Uh, states including Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, Montana, and Idaho are all below 30% good to excellent. So these uh, very poor winter wheat ratings nationally That could be part of the reason why wheat is independently higher uh, this morning while row crops are lower and it's early. Things may change by by the time some of you guys watch this. But uh, this was actually worse than expected, this 28%. I think the trade was looking for something around 31, give or take. I mean, it's not a surprise that the ratings are bad, but perhaps this is just slightly worse than expected. Hey, guys, I had some cool premium stuff the last couple of days. I had some grain marketing recommendations out uh, Friday and also early this week. Anytime I put recommendations, out I uh, do a video and I run through exactly what I advised why I advised it and then for that given crop and crop year I go through and review every single sale that I've made uh, broken down by percentage terms uh, weighted averages all of that stuff and then today uh, I'm gonna blast out a video that I did with uh, my friend Chris Barron from Agview Solutions we are starting to get a little bit of a feel for 2024 corn and soybean budgets, uh, how they're stacking up. Uh, Chris had some uh, initial data based on his um, uh, set of customers, which are farmers all across the country, what it's starting to look like for uh, 2024 as the data is populated. If you guys want to see this premium stuff, sign up this morning. Uh, go to standardgrain.com. It'll take you about one minute to sign up with your credit card. Uh, I'll throw you on my email list. I'll blast you over these videos this morning. Uh, tons of premium stuff every single business day's day, guys. Remember, 50 bucks a month. Cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. I promise. Uh, commercial grain giant Louis Dreyfus is going to exit Russia. So they will follow Cargill and Viterra and I think ADM in exiting Russia. Uh, they don't have a ton of business there. I think they accounted for like 2% of total exports um, from July through uh, March of this year. 
They are assessing options for transfers of existing Russian business. They're going to transfer it to, to Russian grain companies the way that it sounds. So more of the same here. All of these uh, big kind of international grain companies exiting Russia. Uh, Russia, the, the state and Russian companies are going to take over control. It doesn't sound like Russia, it doesn't sound like shipments will be, are going to be disrupted. It sounds like the uh, the people doing the business are just going to kind of, it's going to change hands. But I think there's some uncertainty here. And I think this whole story has been kind of friendly in regard to the wheat market. USDA reported flash sales of old crop uh, soybean oil and new crop corn on Monday. You don't see soybean oil flash sales uh, very often, so that's kind of interesting. Unknown buyers, and again, that's uh, for this marketing year. The uh, corn sale was to Mexico, not a huge amount, about 6 million bushels, and that's new crop corn to Mexico. Mexico is, uh, of course, one of our uh, most reliable corn buyers. U.S. corn shipments improved last week, but probably still not where we need to be. 1.1 million metric tons, that's about 61 million bushels of corn, inspected for export during the week ending March 30th. That was up 59% on the week, but down 29% versus the same week last year. We really need to do better. We need to be up in this like million and a half metric ton range, and maybe we'll get there given these uh, recent Chinese purchases. Accumulated corn shipments for the current marketing year are down 37% versus last year. Accumulated sales are down 33%. Uh, soybean shipments were just okay, I guess, average for this time of year at about 500,000. Wheat shipments were poor at 169,000. Brazilian soybean harvest continues well-followed private group Ag Rural estimated that the crop was 76% harvested through Thursday. They were 81% the same week last year. They estimated planting of the country's second and larger corn crop at 99%. So they're basically done planting that second corn crop. Uh, weather forecasts look pretty good. I've got kind of a rough estimate of where second uh, corn areas are here on my screen. This is the GFS for the next 10 days. They're going to catch some rains. Some areas will catch more rains than others, but I think that uh, all the potential in the world is there. There for that second corn crop. Uh, speaking of that, well-followed private group uh, Stonex increased their estimates for the Brazilian soybean and corn crops this week. They've got the soybean crop at fit at 157.7 million metric tons, up from 154.7 previously. USDA is down at 153. They've got the corn crop at a whopping 131.3 million metric tons up from 130.6 previously. Uh, these are like the largest estimates circulating among any well-followed private groups or any group for that matter uh, when it comes to Brazilian crop estimates. So Stonex is really high here. Um, I don't know if, if this is reality or not, but if you did see a realization of the Stonex numbers, that would help to uh, loosen the global balance sheets, maybe hurt U.S. export possibilities. You could probably make that argument. Hey guys, the grain markets are closed on Friday in observance of the Good Friday holiday. So following a normal close on Thursday, we'll reopen Sunday night at 7 o'clock Central Time. Cattle market was lower yesterday. Feeder cattle were lower. Uh, cash trade was good last week, just kind of a corrective action yesterday. U.S. dollar is lower to start off uh, this morning. Ahead of cash open, the stock market's a little bit higher. The S&P's up 13. Dow Jones up 55. Uh, bonds are off. Gold's about flat. Crude oil is up 70 cents, 81.11 last in the May WTI. Everybody have a great day today. I'll talk to you guys Wednesday.